around the year 2000, mm -hmm. a new state education commissioner oh, yeah. came in at in New York. His name mm -hmm. was uh, Richard Mills. Interesting side story to the side story is that Richard Mills had been in Vermont as their state commissioner mm -hmm. and had implemented some real positive progressive educational reform in terms of assessment by portfolio. Oh, right. But after a couple of years, they decided it didn't work. Mm. And uh, so he went traditional on them and did high stakes <laughs> standardized testing and, and whatever was needed. And he got hired in New York by the Board of Regents there to come over mm. there and, and fix New York because we're going mm -hmm. downhill too is what it boiled down to. And his intended policy was that all schools would have to use the five New York State Regents exams right. as a mm. as one criteria for graduation. They had to pass that with a 65% passing. Of course, our the response at School Without Walls in the year 2000 while I was there was, that doesn't make any sense for us in mm -hmm. terms of where we want to go with kids, in okay, terms yeah. of developing critical thinking, you know, creative problem solving, learning to use the community as a resource, creating positive interpersonal relationships, uh, those kinds of things, being a great citizen and how to, mm -hmm. how to be a change agent, all of those things. That, those things are not tested for on the Regents' <laughs> exams. So right, right. a house divided against itself shall not stand was the rallying cry that we had and we actively fought against it and found out that there were about uh, 30 other schools in New York State that had the same kind of concerns. Mm -hmm. They were mostly from New York City. There was one in Ithaca mm -hmm. and, uh, and us in Rochester. And we got together and said, let's form a new network of schools that will actively lobby for this. And, mm -hmm. and we did. In fact, we, after confronting the commissioner with the principals from all the schools, in Albany, we met with him and he turned us down, said, no, nope, this is what we're going to do, whatever. Mm. We then, New York, New York City schools had some good connections with high-powered attorneys, law firms there, and we, we hired pro bono a law firm to represent us. It went all the way to the New York uh, Court of Appeals. Hmm. And I was the plaintiff. I was, oh. the, <laughs> I was the token plaintiff. <laughs> and... It was before they, I think, before they could make a ruling on it, the regents, board of regents, there's 17 of them. There were a couple who were former law uh, legislators as well. They said, let's work this out without a court decision and, mm. you know, let's come up with a compromise. So they came up with a compromise, which was, okay, the 30 odd schools don't have to do the regents mm -hmm. except the English. They have to uh. do the English. We were amazed that we got away with that and that they didn't include math, you know, because yeah, math yeah. was always the, the big issue, I think, with a lot of schools and kids and whatever. Mm -hmm. So that was the compromise that we went to. And uh, there was a lot of work done by the consortium in terms of, because we one of the, the uh, agreements was, as opposed to Regents' exams, what will you use mm -hmm. to make sure that kids have a understanding of social studies, of science, mm. of English, of math, whatever. Incidentally, the reason I mention English is that our compromise with them was that, okay, we'll do the ELA, but we're also going to do one of our own as well. Yeah. <laughs> do a separate PBAT, we call them, uh, performance-based mm. assessments. So we did that, and we developed, basically it was more in-depth projects by individual students who had to mm. present to a committee of two teachers and an outside resource person, a community professional, usually an expert in the area that they had chosen to work mm -hmm. on. And also there were a set of skills. There was rubrics that were developed mm -hmm. as a guide to assess each student. And they were really good, they, they are really good in terms of uh, emphasizing critical thinking, creative problem solving, you know, being able to discern fact from opinion, mm -hmm. even empathizing with other perspectives, those kinds of things. So those became, those plus we, what we had already developed became the, 
the driving force of mm -hmm. each class and extended class and other classes at School Without Walls, as right. well as all the other consortium schools. So that's, to get back to where we were, right. <laughs> that's kind of the history of, of how we came to discern and identify what, what we're really after in terms of kids right, right. beginning to do. And of course, those are difficult to necessarily measure as well, but we do our best in terms of having that committee of three people there right. to say, well, what about this? You know, have you thought about that? What, what exactly do you think about uh, Trump's version of, of immigration, you know, that mm -hmm, kind of thing, mm -hmm. versus Biden's, you know, if that's what their project was on. So, right, right. Yeah, so the skills were an important piece. Now, to get into the other aspects of self-determination theory, more mm -hmm. some of the affective things that we thought were important, one of the the key points of self-determination theory tends to be taking students' perspectives and letting right. students know that you're not necessarily judgmental, but you may ask them questions about it in, in order to get them to think about their issues. Or, you know, do you think, you know, even though you don't like math, do you think there's a purpose for it? Do you think uh, society needs you to be a, a reasonable mathematician in some ways? You know, those kinds of questions that we mm -hmm. think are important. As well as, you know, uh, you know, Jamal, you, you look like you're angry this morning. What's going on? You know, tell me about it. You know, those mm -hmm. kinds of things. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that we implemented at School Without Walls is that every kid, every day, has to write in their journal. Hmm. And so during extended class time, they take the time to do that. You know, and, right. you know there are going to be prompts like, you know, think about, you know, what is it in your... Uh, what is it at home or at school that really bothered you today or this mm. week? You know, write about that, you know, and tell us about it or whatever you want. And for mm -hmm. kids who don't like to write, draw a picture about it, you know, if, mm. if you want to and put a caption on it and whatever. So journals were important not only for kids to write and keep themselves, but the agreement was with the kid that once every two weeks, you're going to turn the journal in to your advisor, the teacher mm -hmm. of that extended class. And there's a trust relationship going on here. I'm not right. going to share it with anybody unless you demonstrate that there's an issue of self-harm or harm to others. You know, mm -hmm. And that way mm -hmm. I'm obligated. I have to do it. So kids right. knew that up front. Mm -hmm. But it became what I still consider one of the most effective ways to identify trauma or potential trauma within mm -hmm. a kid's life. Mm -hmm. Because once a kid, once a teacher had that, they could talk with the kid. Because the second part of the journal thing is that I have to meet with you now individually for at least 20 minutes once every two weeks, one-on-one. -on -one. And we talk about your journal, we talk about how things are going in the extended class, other classes, what you might need help with if I have to refer you to the counselor or social worker, whatever, we have to do that. So mm -hmm. tremendous opportunity. So, so it sort of has that advisory, like an advisory kind of role. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, the extended class was not only academic, but also advisory for social emotional issues. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and for the teachers and the class to determine at times, you know, I, I seem to detect that there's something going on here in this extended class with, I don't know, you know, you, you, all of you seem to identifying some concern about drugs. Mm. Do you think it would be worthwhile for for us to have a, a drug expert, a counselor, come into our mm. class and talk to us about it? Yeah, how many of you think that? You know, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's mm -hmm. do it. You know, let's make it happen. Even though it's it's kind of like in intermittent time, intermittent right, time right. within our academic focus on criminal justice, there's some relationship to it as well. So, you know, right, let's right. do it. And it makes perfect sense for you guys. So, yeah. so in terms so, so of it problem sounds like... identification, it was critical, mm -hmm. the journals and the personal conferences. Right, right. Sorry. Yeah, so, so it, it sounds like that there's the structuring of the, of the program is not about predetermination. It's about uh, 
emergent, uh, just emerging out of who's in the room and and what what they bring. Is, would the, yes. is, does that sound reasonable? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. In terms of their interest and their needs and their experiences, what is it that we can use to massage that into a learning experience for you that will mm -hmm. not only satisfy you personally in terms of self-actualization, right. but also your self-esteem. You're going to grow more. You're going to really feel good about what you're doing. Having the opportunity to present your findings to the city council, you know, those mm. types of <laughs> things, you know, extremely intrinsically motivating for kids. Some a little right. scary, but... Right, you know, right. we'll work on your presentation to the city council, you yeah. know, <laughs> and you can even have a friend come with you, you know, from class, you know, to help mm -hmm, you present, mm -hmm. those kinds of things. So, yeah. This is the Agentic Schools Vodcast, where you will learn about schools from around the world where children's agency to make decisions about their learning and living is more important than their academic skills. What makes education possible? is the satisfaction of psychological needs. So that is what these schools have in common with all others. What makes a school agentic is satisfying those needs particularly well. I'm your host, Don Berg.